God bless everybody. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you now for what you have done, what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for all your blessings. Lord, we thank you for watching over us, keeping us, and thank you for allowing us to come out to your house one more time. We pray that tonight, Lord, will be a life-changing experience, that we will get a closer walk with you, that uh, your word will be opened up to us, and that you will continue to keep us in your will. We bless your name, and we thank you for all you have done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, we uh, honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we thank him for an opportunity to serve and opportunity to do his will and and to help others and uh, just thank God for all of the praises that have gone up and uh, pray that God continue to bless you and continue to keep you as our prayers uh, it's been a good week uh, certainly I've enjoyed the children all week long and uh, the family just had a great time all week and uh, God has just been good and it make our heart glad to to enjoy uh, our own family. Why God permit us to live on this earth? Amen. How many of you know that we're not gonna be here always? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on, hold on a second. Yes. Oh, I just got a call. Somebody uh, want to do something? So hold on, just one second. Uh, if y'all stand to your feet right quick. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, LP. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Bless you, may God bless you. Harmony. May God bless you. Elder Pitts celebrating his 74th anniversary uh, birthday. Our assistant pastor. Uh, God has blessed him. God has kept him. And so tonight we want to just honor you for a little bit. Amen. Now, you don't do push-ups anymore. <laughs> but if you want to do it for him, you're welcome to come. <laughs> but certainly we thank God for Elder Pitts. And thank God for all of the years he's been here with us. Uh, almost 25 years. And uh, has been truly been a servant and Amen. has truly been a friend. And, and tonight we just want to say thank you, sir, yeah. for just hanging in here with us and, and just being uh, a good friend, a good working partner with us, and, yeah. and just a good relationship. Yeah. So, so God bless you tonight, and may God bless you with many more. I, I, got, I got a lot of papers in my pocket, but... Oh. I think I had something in here for you somewhere. Oh, it's some place in there. Where is it? He is full. Oh, he's trying to For my for my friend. So, so, so bit, words to the wise. How do you get the 74 years? Day by day. Amen. 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 And through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you have to be good to yourself and you have to love yourself. Yes. Amen. And most of all, you have to love others. Amen. And you'll get there. Yes. Amen. If you be obedient to your parents. That's it. Amen. You'll get there. Yes. Amen. Amen. You'll get there because God is good. He's great. He's, 
and I didn't know I was going to get here, but now that I'm here, I'm ready to go forward. I'm ready to go forward. Bless you, Bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God is good. Uh, again, we thank God for Elder Pitt, our assistant pastor, for 74 years. God has blessed his life. And, you know, uh, a, um, a long part, a good part of those 74 years, he wasn't living. But one day he met Jesus. And he found out what life was all about. Don't have time to go through his whole story, but the Lord brought him from a mighty long ways. And uh, I thank God for him. Come on, let's give him a praise. Thank you. Yes, sir. Today is your what? Amen. And we'll, 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 get, we'll get around to the rest of you uh, July babies somehow, especially the ones that are uh, under the hill. <laughs> but God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. It's our prayer. Let's look in the word of God for a little bit, and then we'll, we'll head on out of here. Uh, again, I thank him for such a tremendous week and, and weekend, and uh, it just has been a beautiful week, and we've been riding, and we've we seen bears and moose, and uh, we've just been having a good time, and then we, we went to work for a little bit. So today, I want to invite your attention. Our study text is found in uh, St. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. St. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. And, and I just wanted to kind of read that tonight. And you can also read it uh, uh, later on during the rest of this week. But I wanted to just kind of read that to kind of set the, the atmosphere for this lesson tonight. Uh, St. John chapter number 15, beginning with verse number 1. Are you there? I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, uh, that it may bring forth more fruit. Somebody say more fruit. fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. Somebody say much fruit. Much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his eternal word. If you abide in me, in my word abide in you. You bring forth more fruit, and you bring forth much fruit. And not only that, whatever you ask, you shall receive it, because you abide in me, and my word abide in you. We were, we were living in a season, and I know there's a lot going on in the world. There's a the pandemic. There, there's, there's just crazy things going on all over the world. But, but nevertheless, as I begin to talk with the people of God all over the country and all over the world, the things that God is doing in the lives of his people right now is nothing short of a miracle, nothing short of something that only God can do. You know, I often thought about how he keeps a, 
a fresh fish, a fresh fish in a salty ocean without the, fi uh, the salt being in their effect or having an effect on the fish. And then when you catch the fish, you still have to put salt on it to put season to it. Only a God can do something like that. Yeah, just think about all the things that he do and that he have done that made our lives so comfortable, made our lives so uh, uh, better, and the wisdom that he has given to mankind to, to constantly invent and make things to, to make us a little bit more comfortable here on earth. Now, we just want to be comfortable. We don't want to stay here. Just, just let us be comfortable while we are here. Uh, and so when we look in this 15th chapter of St. John, it sets the pace for our, our scripture tonight, which is our study text, or our noted text, Matthew chapter uh, 13 and verse 18 through 23. And I, I just want to note that first verse uh, of that, uh, that 18th verse of that 13th chapter as a setting for our scripture text tonight. It says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Hear the parable of the sower. Because no matter what we do, uh, we have to remain in the field of God. Uh, you, you might understand that better by and by. No matter where life might take you during your lifetime, you must always remain in the field of God. If you, if you get out of the field of God, you lose the protection of God. You, you lose the benefits of God. And he cannot benefit you or protect you until you come back into the field of God. Because God, God's substance don't work outside of his field. Uh, Y'all you follow me tonight. Uh, if you want to be blessed, then you got to get in the field. If you want to be successful, you must get in the field of God. And, and so uh, he, he says to us, hear therefore the parable of the sower. Uh, now, now the field can, can be a little rough if you don't cultivate it. Uh, I, I want to use the topic tonight, uh, uh, the, 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 the vine or the root system. The root system. Uh, there, there is two system to, to a vine. There, there is the vine itself, the branches, and there's also the root system. The root system work underneath the earth to bring nourishment from the earth to the plant. The leaf system work uh, upon the earth to draw nourishment from the sun, S-O-N. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. And you need both of these systems to survive. We were here on, I think it was Saturday, Friday, and uh, the Harris were here cleaning the church, and, and uh, we, had, we were in the foyer, and I just, I said, look at that tree. Uh, Y'all remember when I cut all those leaves off the tree, and it was so bad looking, and it was looking like it was on its last leg and dying. Uh, many of the leaves had withered and turned brown, and the tree just looked it's so bad. Look at your neighbor and say, you just look so bad. But, but with a little pruning, God will God make you well again. Because when we look at our, our, our study text, he, he said, uh, if you were any branch in me that bringeth forth fruit, he, he purges it, that it may bring forth much or, or more fruit. God is not satisfied with the condition we are in. He always wants us to be better to do better and achieve more. God don't want us to stay. I used to like to use the, the term, and I don't know where it came from, uh, but we used to use it, and I, I, I think I won't be using it anymore. If you can't go forward, don't go backward. Just march and make time. Ain't no place in the scripture where God told you to mark and make, just mark and mark time. He told you to press. He told you to run. 
Uh, y'all, 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 y'all with me? But sometimes you pick up these attitudes and these, these, these thoughts from your, your, your life, doing your livelihood, and, and sometimes you think it's God's word, and you start using it as though it's God's word. But God always wants you to go forward. He always wants you to be a producer. He always wants you to do better and so he can come back to receive you and receive you with a good heart. Amen? So let's look into our lesson tonight. Uh, I want to read it right quick, the King James Version. Then I'm going to go to the NIV for our lesson topics. It's, it says in verse 19, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, heareth the word of the kingdom. Heareth me and continue to hear it. Not hear the word of the kingdom. Heareth, which means you, 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 you are hearing it over and over because repetitive uh, tends to build habits. And, and if you, you repeat things or you constantly hear things, it tends to build a habit in your life. Uh, and before you know it, you do it without even thinking about it. So when you start just hearing the word over and over again, that word that you hear will change your life. But if you don't hear it, it creates a problem. Amen? Uh, he that heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not. And that it's something here in this verse, you would think he would start off with the positive part, but he starts off with the negative part. If, if you hear it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches it away. That which was sown in his heart. Where was it sown? In his heart. And so, so you can't doubt, you can't, you can't dispute them say the word wasn't in you. The word was sowing, sown in your heart. But even if it's sown in your heart, you need two systems to make it operate. You need a root system and you need a branch system. Are you listening to me? And if you don't have those systems, the word in your heart will not stay there long. Oh, help me, Jesus. It, it goes on to say, this is he which received receive seed by the wayside. By the wayside. And I'll tell you about the wayside in a little bit. I'm coming back to it. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receive it. They got happy about it. Yet, yet has he not, what? Root in himself. You know, the church might have root. Other folks might have root. But you got to have it in yourself. Mama may have root. Daddy may have root. But you got to have a root system in yourself. And because he did not have root in himself, but endureth for a while. You ever see somebody get happy for a while? Come to church for a while? Live right for a while. God is not for a while God. <laughs> for when tribulations and persecution arises, because the word, by and by, because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Because he had no root. No root. No root. I noticed in my yard that we went in not long ago and there was a section that I had some guys came in and, and they took all of the wood out of it, took all of the brick out of it, took all everything out of it. They 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 brought it I brought a tilt a tiller and they tilt up all of the grass and the, the flowers and they just dig, dug up the root. But one thing they did not do, they did not kill all the root. Yes. And I realized that uh, uh, the, 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 a lot of the weeds and stuff that I didn't want to be there are still there. And, and so what I got to do now is make sure that the good grass, somebody's a good grass, that the good grass will outgrow the bad one. And so I went out and I got me the best grass I could find and I threw it in that yard and I gave it water. And in about a week and a half, the new grass started coming along. And I allowed them to grow together. And because I'm the Lord of my yard, I was able to go out there and separate the wheat from the 
tears. Are y'all listening to me? So, so don't try to separate unless you're the Lord of the garden. Because you mess around and pull up the good <laughs> to do root system, the root system and the, 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 the branches. Two systems. And you need both. Somebody tell somebody, say, I need them both. I need them both. And so it says, because they had no root in themselves. They were offended. Then it goes to verse 22. He also that receiveth seed among throne, the throne, thrones is he that heareth the word. And then verse number one says, uh, when anyone heareth, right? And so it says, he that heareth the word and the care of this world. Man, you got to make up in your mind that you are through with this world. Because if you're not through with it, there is so much in this world that will pull you back out in it. So you got to be through with it. You got to say, that's it. I'm done. No more world. Thank you, thank you Jesus. And, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. The word has to be free in you. I'll say it again. The word has to be free in you. Because in order for the word to benefit you, it must be free to, to mold you and bend you and fix you and purge you and cleanse you up and sanctify you. And if the word is being choked, it can't perform the task that God has intended for the word to do. So it can't perform. It is choked out of you and you become unfruitful. And what did God say happened to you if you're unfruitful? He'll cut you down. He'll cut you down. He ain't going to try to prune you. He ain't going to try to put fertilizer under you. If you're unfruitful, he will cut you down. And after he cuts you down, he'll let you wither away, and he'll throw you in the fire because you are unfruitful. One of the reasons I know so many trades and I learned so many different uh, 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 job series because I was trying to find one that was going to be productive for me. And I started out as a brick mason and a, and a brick contractor. At 21 years old, I had eight people working for me as a contractor. And after a while, I, I, I figured out that things weren't working the way I wanted it to work. Because they supposed to make a profit and pay me. That's what, that's what workers do for boss. Y'all know that, right? The workers work and make a profit and pay the boss. That's how it works. If the boss got to work and make a profit to pay you, something was wrong. And so after a few years of me working to pay them, I said, this is not working right. I'm supposed to be making a whole lot of money off of you. I need you to be able to make, lay enough brick per day to pay yourself, to pay one labor, and make me a profit. And if you're not doing that, this ain't working. This ain't working. Are y'all still with me? And, 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 so, and so I decided I need to learn to do something that I could do by myself. Because if I don't make it, it ain't nobody's fault but mine. So, so God has he, he have taken out all the excuse of going to heaven. Because if he had to put, put the burdens on a group of folks, then we would have somebody to blame it on. But he, he took the burden of going to heaven and placed it on an individual. If you want to go, it's up to you. If you don't want to go, you can't blame nobody but yourself. But because they became unfruitful, God, the seed was choked out of him. Verse 23. He that received seed unto the good ground. Somebody say good ground. Is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth and some a hundredfold, sixty and thirty. This is a person that received the word on good ground. They, 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 the word is cultivated. They understand what the word is saying. And it, they bear fruit. 
we have fruitless saints because really they don't understand the word. They'll say amen. they say, thank you, Jesus. Preach, pastor. And they'll walk right at you and don't understand the word. And when you, are, when you don't understand the word, you go back to verse number one. He that heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not. They are the ones that they receive the word by the wayside. So let's go to number one. Let's talk about the wayside. So many fall, and by the way, what is the wayside? <laughs> Lord, help me to stay. Verse 19, anyone heareth the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatched away that which was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path, the wayside. Anytime the word of God is given and you're, you're involved in something else, you're receiving the word by the wayside. If the word is being given and you're having a conversation with the person sitting next to you, you are receiving the word by the wayside. If something, if something is in the church more important to you than the word that is being given, you are receiving the word by the wayside. Because, see, the word don't come by just hearing with this. You have to hear with this. And if you're being a distracted by this, then you can't hear with this. And you can't get rooted, it can't get rooted in you because you're going to miss what the preacher or the teacher or those giving the word has said. And you go out not understanding what they said. And therefore the word is able to be snatched away from you because you've received it by the wayside. There's a place that you should be when you receive the word. And I'm not talking about in your favorite chair. I'm not set, talking about sitting on your favorite row. You, got, you must be out of attention to the word. You must be attentively listening to the word. Because if you're not doing that, then the word will come, become of none effect to you. I mean, a lot of times, you'll see me, I'll, I'll try to sit by myself if I sit down. I'll try to be in, a, in an awkward position because folks got a tendency to talk to you in church. I know I'm, I'm not talking to y'all. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to mother folks. I'm talking to ones that are not here tonight. They got a tendency to talk to you. And when the word is being given, you need all of your attention on the word. Because this, this is not something we just do for fashion. This is not a social gathering. That's why I, 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 I can't understand how folks won't come to church and social gather, but they'll march the street. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. The wayside. Four things, three things that happen to those that are Hearing the word by the wayside. There's a lack of understanding. There's a lack of understanding. If you don't get what God's word says you're going to get, there's a lack of understanding. Man, the older I get, the more I understand God's word. And the more benefit I get out of it. I was, we left here Sunday and we went to a church after this church. And the preacher was preaching a message that I've heard over and over and over and over and over. And all of a sudden, he said something that was a wow. I never thought about it that way. Because I was listening. And when you're listening, God will talk to you. Why did Samuel have to go back three times to hear God? He wasn't listening. He wasn't listening. He didn't understand who was calling him. If he was listening, he would have heard God the first time. So many times when a word comes from God, we go to somebody else. 
We, 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 we always think that somebody else is talking to us. You, you better start listening to God. Okay. I was sharing with a pastor the other day. If, if I had listened to folks, I would not be where I am today. Because folks always got the wrong word. I don't care who they are. They always got the wrong word. You got to start listening to God. And the only way to listen to God is to start listening to his word. And when you listen to his word, sometimes it don't even seem like it's going to work. But if God said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Another way of knowing whether you've received the word by the wayside is there is no improvement. Year after year, you are same in, in the same predicament you've always been in. You are receiving the word by the wayside. Because there is no improvement in your life. Oh, it got quiet. It even got quiet on the internet. <laughs> God wants you to progress. He wants you to be better. He wants you to be a, a greater person here on earth than you've been yesterday, than you've been last week, than you've been last year. He wants you to improve. Don't bring God those same old broken thing every Sunday. Show God that you can, be, you can improve. Show him that you can be better. Show him that you can progress. No improvement. Finally, no pro progress. You take one foot one step forward, three step backward. The wayside. Somebody said the wayside. wayside. Number two, the stony places. Now, just because God told you to build your house on a rock, <laughs> that don't mean you get your word off the rock. You, you don't put the word on the rock. Because the word can't grow on a rock. Are y'all hearing me? The word has to grow inside of you. It, it don't grow on other things. And so it says that it, it, they receive the word on stony places. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once received it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution come because of the word, he quickly falls away. Somebody say a temporary praise. Anybody can get excited. Man, I get Preston on the organ right now and wind that thing up and I can hoop a little bit and everybody in here be, eh? But what are you going to do when that ends? I mean, I like, I like when a person gives me some understanding, teaches me some, and on the end, just give me a little a joy. I love it. But I, I don't walk out here with that joy. That's right. Come on. That's right. I walk out here with that understanding. What was the preacher saying? What did God try to reveal to me in this message? Who? On last Thursday night, Elder Pitt talked to us, faith that works. That's right. That's right. The, 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 the central theme of that message was, if you got faith, it should be working. That's right. And, and don't, don't try to prove it to me. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to prove what faith you got to me. You need to prove it to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You think God didn't know the faith of Abraham? But he said, hey, Abraham, I need to prove something to you. You need to, you need to know how much faith you, uh, you believe in. You need to know how much you trust me. I want you to go sacrifice Isaac. Abraham he had no better sense. He just went right on up. Faith. Somebody said, faith that works. And when you read Hebrews 11th chapter, it says that Abraham was going to kill Isaac because, look, look at faith. Faith is what? Y'all was a little slow, but y'all got it. 
So, so Abraham couldn't see Isaac raised from the dead. But even God didn't even tell him that Isaac was going to be raised from the dead. Uh, y'all, y'all listen to it. But Abraham, through trusting God, developed faith within himself. And he believed that if he had sacrificed Isaac, that God was going to bring him back from the dead. Somebody say, faith that works. So, so when, you, when, you, when you start thinking about this thing, you need to prove God to yourself. And so you need that root. You need that, that assurance that whatever you believe God for, that it will take root in your life. And when you need something from God, you just ask. Because his word is in you. And you are in his word. And you can ask what you will. So many people are asking what they will, but they're not in God. And then after a while, they'll come back and try to blame the church. I try that religion. That thing don't work. No, what ain't working is you. Because I tried him and I know. That he'll work it out every time. So you, you develop this temporary praise. Some of you, it only lasts Sundays. By Sunday night, you all out of it. Because it's just a temporary praise. Some of you, just, it lasts as long as the praise team is singing. Then it is over. Your mind, your mind got this automatic recall switch on it. While the music is going on, you all in it. As soon as the music stops, it just recall right back to your natural self. Temporary praise. Some of us got a top of the ground salvation. Y'all know the top of the world? The top of the ground salvation. What is the top of the ground salvation? That's when you take the word that you receive and you plant it on the top of the ground. And you expect it to grow. But you got it on the top of the ground. Now there's a danger. Those of you that know anything about planting, there's two dangers. One danger is to have your seed on top of the ground. The other one is to have it too deep. Some of you try to go too deep too early. I just taught you something that's this bit. <laughs> You want to go too deep too early. If you, if you plant it at the right depth, the root system will go as deep as it needs to go. Oh, Not the seed. Not the, the roots. So the more words you take in, the deeper the roots will go. So when the storm comes and blow you, you, you may rock from side to side, but you will not give up. Because you got some roots. Top of the ground salvation is the one that only take a little bit of stuff. Because they, they don't have no roots. So don't push them too hard. They'll tumble over on you. <laughs> you, you know, those of you that plant garden, you, you can take a, a seed. I saw someone on the internet the other day on YouTube. You take a seed. Put it inside a napkin, spray it with water, fold the napkin, put it inside a dish, and the seed will grow. And it won't take long. The germination will take place, and it will grow. But what do you have to do with that seed after it grows? You got to plant it in some soil. How many of you take a piece of plant, a piece of flower, you break off a leaf, and you put it in a jar, and it starts growing what? Roots. But if you keep it in that jar, what will happen? It won't die. It just won't progress. As long as you keep water in it, it will not die, but it'll never grow more leaves. It'll never grow larger. It'll just stay one size. Because there's a certain place that a seed should be. It shouldn't be on rocks. It shouldn't be on th- in thrones. And it shouldn't be on stony places. A seed should be in the earth. And the earth must be cultivated so the seed can grow freely. Help me, Jesus. 
and those that fall on stony places, look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long. It won't be long. <laughs> it, it, you, don't, you don't have to judge people. You, you just know that if your word that you are receiving uh -huh. is not falling on good ground, on. Your, your salvation ain't going to be long. Because you can't be what you are not. You can fake it till a while. What that term y'all used to use? Suspit. I like suspit. Fake it till you make it. What that happen? You gonna fake it till you mess up? You gotta fake it. You gotta fake it. Cause somebody gonna wind up pushing that. That last nerve. That last. That was. That's the one at the end. Now, as long as they're pushing the one all in the middle, you okay. But if you go to the last one, because remember, you only got a temporary praise. You, you only, you have a ground salvation. So it won't be long. Number three, thrones. The one who received the word, seed that fell among the thrones is the man who hears the word. Somebody say, hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. It wasn't that the word wasn't given. The word wasn't fruitful. It didn't make your life fruitful. And God does not like anybody whose life is not fruitful. You say, well, God is love. God is more than love. <laughs> the scripture says it's a fearful thing to fall in the hand of a loving God. No, of an angry God. And it says that God is a consuming fire. So, so God, yes, he's love. He's already given that love. When did he give it? God so loved the world that he gave. That was the love that was given. Now what he's doing, he, he's, he's giving you word to make you go to a place where you can receive that love and then he can receive you. But if you don't receive that love, there's only one other side of God you, you won't get. And believe me, you don't want that side. Matthew, Matthew said, or John said in the 15th chapter, if you go on that side, God's going to cut you down and throw you in the fire. So, so who are they, those that the word falls around Mount the thrones? Stop getting your word out of the bushes. Stop getting your word out of the bushes. What is a bush word? The preacher is a teacher that doesn't teach a lesson. And after church, you go to somebody else to get a word. That's a bush word. Learn to receive what is given at dinner. Uh, we were talking to some friend of ours the other day over at Bambino Baby Food Company. And uh, me and her husband was talking, and we were saying, man, this pandemic has been great. He said, every day we can have dinner at 6 o'clock, the whole family. Come on. Come on. Come on. I wish that church get to the point that whenever the word is given, everybody will come to the table and say, feed me until I want no more. And once the preacher say, amen, you, you got your feeling, now you can go home and allow it to digest. But if you are not careful, before you get out the door, you'll be eating out the bushes. Those that fall by the thrones are, thrones are those worry saints. Somebody say worry saints. Every time you see them, they worry about something. Jesus cast all your cares, not some of them. Cast all of them upon him, for he cares for you. If you want something to kill your praise, keep hanging around worry folks. 
Because you need somebody to build you up. You need somebody to tell you that you can make it, that you can get through what you're going through. Child, I've been through the same thing. And I'm going to tell you, there's no way to get through it. You're going to do it. No, give me some hope. Because worry, folks, not going to be along too, around too long. And then you got the Jones Saints. The cares of this world. The wealth of this world. These are the Joneses. Because everything you see the Jones got, you want it. <laughs> and buddy, you don't understand, Joneses have to pay for that stuff. And, and the, the bad thing about it, it's just not a one-time payment. And you know how they get you. They say, come on, and man, you don't have a payment for a whole year. That's it. That's it. And you say, oh, man, this is a deal. Church, Lord, bless me. I got to do this, and I got to do that. Those are Jones saints. Come on. You only praise God when you can get something. Because you, you've set your whole life on doing what other folks do. Jesus. What if you live your life for yourself? Oh my God. What if you be like you want to be? And, uh, anybody that ever been to McCray House, we live in our home. We, we don't have a living room we don't live in. We don't have a dining room we don't eat in. Are you, are you listening to me? You got these beautiful homes, these immaculate living rooms that you can't even go in. The cares of this life. And then when an important person comes, you are just as hypocritic, hypocrite as you can be. Come on, Pastor. You come on in here. You come on. You can eat at this table. If your husband not eating at it, if your family not eating at it, nobody else should be eating at it. Stop being like the Joneses. Then finally, we get to the good ground. This is holy ground. So come and bow down. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. It's the man, the woman, the boy, the girl who hears the word and understands it. Just in Acts 2, what did pastor, you want me to do something for me, for her? The only way I'm going to let you do what you ask is you tell me what pastor preached about. And she couldn't do it at first, and, but she didn't give up. Praise God. She searched until she figured out what that word was. All right, <laughs> and when she figured out what it was, she had her mom to call Chester and say, Uncle Chester, I know what pastor pre preach about, Papa preach about. You can't even get that from saints. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but when it, runs, it falls on good ground, not only you hear the word, but you understand the word. Who are I with somebody in here understood the word tonight? And once you understand the word, that's when production starts. If you want to be a producer, you got to understand the word. You just can't hear it. You got to understand what did God mean? Say, I'll make your enemy be at peace with you. You got to understand what that means. What did God mean when He told me, You ain't doing a walk to the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear evil. What did God mean when He said, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory? What did He mean? And when you don't understand it, you start eating out the trash can. You start believing what other folks said. No, you got to understand this thing for yourself. And once you understand for yourself, you'll see God open doors for you. I mean, everything you need to know is 
faith in the word. If you want to get out of debt, my sister, all you got to do, you go to the word. Oh, I wish somebody hear me. If you want to be blessed far above measure, you go to the word. But you can't just go to the word. You got to understand the word. Ooh, Jesus. And understand it. He produced a crop. And the yielding from that crop turns out to be 100, 60, or even 30 times what was sown. How much you put in it determines how much come out of it. And when you start understanding God's word, when you start receiving God's word with gladness, when you start putting attentive, listening to God's word, your, 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 your production or your, your benefits out of it is going to be spectacular. And you're going to see God turning things around that you can't even believe. You're going to see him making ways out of way, out of no way. You're going to see him be opening doors that have been shut in your face. You're going to see God do a lot of things. He'll start even doing things that you are not even asking him for. Because you got an understanding of God's word. I, I told many times about the time when a uh, uh, landlord owed us a, a deposit. And, and all, all this person had to do is, is pay us our deposit. Then she wouldn't have to deal with God. Oh, that's all she, she had to do was give back what wasn't hers. Y'all y'all hear me? And I understand how God's word works. If I had a sorted for myself, I would have missed my blessing. But when I took her to court, the judgment was passed, and she wrote me a, a real loving letter. <laughs> she said, Reverend, it'll be a cold day in hell before I pay you your money. My hand was out of it then. I didn't bother. I didn't worry about it. I could have gone back to court and all that. Nope, I left it alone. And every property she had, every house she had, everything she had was taken away. Once you understand how the word works, if you just keep your hands out of it, you don't have to worry about it, folks. God will work it out for you. But you got to leave folks alone. You got to depend on God's word. Understand, Lord, what does this mean to me? When Jesus taught the word and the disciples didn't understand, they didn't, they didn't stand, stood up in, in the congregation and said, well, Jesus, what do you mean? When, when it all was over, they were taken behind closed doors and said, Master, what meaneth thou? Even this lesson that we, we talked about tonight, this was the second portion of it. Because they didn't understand about the sore and how things operated in the kingdom. So he had to bring and open their understanding what it means by the sore went forth and throw a seed. Once you understand it, it's a concept. It's like giving. You don't have to be saved to be blessed from giving. It's a principle. A lot of folks that don't ever go to church have learned what it means to give. Sister, I love what you said. You said you bless folks that can't do nothing back for me. You know how people bless folks on Christmas time? They give all the folks that can give them a present. You mess around, don't give them a present. You see just how much they love you. And so we exchange gifts at Christmas time. It's not our birthday, but we exchange gifts. And anyway, if you give them something that they really want, every time you see them, they'll have it on. If you give them something that they don't want, If you've given somebody something, let me, let's do a test. If you've given somebody something and you, you haven't seen it since, Boy. 
If you like, it's been a couple of years now. And they never came to you and said, you remember you gave me this? Do it right. Get in the word. Understand the word. Let God make you make your life be good. How many of you want to be blessed? All you got to do is understand the word. There are principles in there. Why are you trying to get your life together? There are principles in the word of God that will bless you far beyond what you can ask or think. But you got to understand it. People look at me at work, and they often, when God just asked me, told me last week, Gene, I want to be just like you. I want to be just like you. Why? Because I stand up and do nothing. And that's what he want to do. I, he don't understand. See, when you ask for something, that's why it says, understand it. You know, you look at somebody standing up doing nothing, you don't know their story. And when you don't know their story, you're just looking on the, the good days. But uh, do you really want to be what I am? Do you really want to, after working almost 50 years, finally you, 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 you're moving on up? Do you really want that? I'll tell you right now, everything that I wanted to achieve in life, I've already achieved. These are the glory days. How would y'all hear me? These are the glory days when you're standing out looking at your garden and it is coming up. Or oh, the sun, S-O-N, just shining down and making your plant grow. This is, these are the good days. I got a, some, some tomato plant in my greenhouse. And when I planted them, they were little things, but this tall. And the more the sun, S-O-N, S-U-N, sign on my greenhouse. Now the largest one is about that high from the top of the greenhouse. So I got to take it off the table and put it on the floor because it's beginning to be fruitful. Last week I went in there, one tomato on the bush. I went in there yesterday, 12 tomato on the bush. Why? Because it's, it's fruitful. You're looking at the fruitful days. But it took some struggling. It took some cultivating. It took some fertilizing. It took some things, some time and energy. Every day when I get home, I go out there and I cultivate. I water. I treat. I fertilize. And after many days, you see the fruit thereof. But it don't grow by itself. You got to put some time in it. If you want to be blessed by God, you got to put in some time. God just not going to bless you for doing nothing. He's just not going to bless you for sitting on your no, no good seat. But you got to do something. You got to bring forth some fruit. I look at this pandemic and I'm through all these hundreds of thousands of people in these mega churches all over this country. They weren't doing nothing. They weren't bringing forth no fruit. There wasn't no fruit from it. So God began to cut all of us down. Because we weren't bringing forth fruit. We had got so caught up on, on just getting the word and not understanding it. But once we get an understanding, God's going to turn this thing around. In fact, I believe he's already turning it around. I believe he's already doing some things. When we come out of this, when we get through this, the church will be more vagrant, more strong, more mighty than it ever was. Because those that have made themselves ready, those that have understood what God is doing in these last and evil days, God's going to bring them up. God's going to build them up. God's going to share the word all over this land. Because somebody is beginning to understand what it means. In our conclusion, the root system. 
the branch system. You need both of them. It's good. It's all good. Because we are a producer now. Look at your tree. I see the little buds coming right now. Those of you that understood what this lesson said tonight, I can see the little buds coming. And after buds, there's a little fruit that comes. After the fruit begin to grow, sooner or later, you can start picking the fruit because you have been become a productive tree. You have become a productive saint. You have become a productive child of God. Before you know it, to somebody else is coming in because you don't bear another fruit. Somebody else is coming in. They're walking in one by one because your tree is now being fruitful and you're multiplying. You're not just satisfied with coming yourselves, but you're bringing somebody else. You're telling somebody else about the goodness of Jesus. You're telling somebody else if they just trust him and understand what he's saying, God can lift them out of their dungeon. God can lift them out of that muck and marry clay that they're in. God can turn their lives around if you just got get them to understand People can't come until they understand. They can't enjoy the benefit of God until they understand. They can't get into the kingdom of God until they understand. So people are dying. They're being crushed for one reason. Not because they didn't hear the word, but they didn't understand. See, they say to God, well, uh, God, if you really, for me, why did you allow this to happen to me? Lord, why? But you didn't understand. David and Bathsheba, Bathsheba had a child, and God said, I'm going to take it. David went into fasting, praying, ashes, he prayed, he prayed, and one day somebody came and he looked at him and said, the child dead. He said, the child is gone. David got to washed his face, changed just like that. Why did he change? Because he understood. When God does something, you got to understand what God is doing. And when you understand what, he, what he's doing, you'll go through it better. But when you don't understand, you're going to punish yourself for the rest of your life on something that if you just gotten an understanding, you would be better. Root system. When I'm dead and gone, my root system will still be expanding. The things that I've done in my life, the teaching that I've shared in my life, when I'm dead and gone, they're going to still be expanding. Because there is a root system. And somebody need to know. Somebody need to catch on to your root. And you, 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 your teaching, your, your lifestyle, your, your living should be spread abroad. Because of that root system. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Keep on listening to the word of God. Depending on the word of God. Watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. I said, watch God bless you. Watch God bless you. I believe he's going to do it far beyond what we ask or think because that's the God we serve. I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'm so happy to be in the kingdom of God. I'm so happy to understand what God is doing in my life in these last and evil days. I just feel happy tonight. And I know there are, there are, I understand that there are dark days that will come. But the, the word said, weeping you may endure for a night. Joy. You know, it's not night always. When, once you understand that, that it's not night always, but joy cometh in the morning. The only thing I, if I have to toss or how many of you have had some sleep this night? Sometimes you just wake up. Sometimes I'll go to sleep, and in about two or three hours, boom, my eyes jump open. 
And that's the hardest thing to try to go back to sleep. But even if I don't go back to sleep, I understand that joy comes in the morning. And when the sun comes up, guess what? It's a new day. And I'm glad of, for God allowing me to make it to a new day. And so I'm not worried about the little bit of sleep I lost last night. I'm just worried about, I'm just caring about, he's allowed me to be in a new day. And because I'm in a new day, I get new mercy. I get new strength. I need to get a new outlook. I get new blessing. I I get new encouragement because it's a new day. A new day. A new day. Once you understand, you'll be all right. All you got to do is understand. Understand how the roots work. Oh, Jesus. The devil come and he just saw you. He, he thought he had killed you. He cut you down. And all this is sticking up on the ground is a nub. He said, oh, yeah, you're dead. I got you. You're gone. But he don't understand how the root system works. And all under the ground, you are still alive and well. And in, in a few days, he'll see a little sprout coming up out of the earth. In a few days, he'll see another thing coming up. In a few days, all that he thought he had killed out of your life will begin to uh, blossom again. And in a few days, your tree will grow again. I heard Job said, if a man die, shall he live again? Oh, my point in time, will I Wait until my change come. The root system. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We're through. You need prayer tonight. Number is on the screen. Uh, if you're giving, uh, all that information on the screen. But God bless you. Thank you for being attentive. And most of all, I thank you for being having an understanding heart, understanding what the Word of God says. Because I want you to be blessed. And not see you going in a digress fashion. I want you to be far, be far, move far above your enemies, move far above your problems, move far above your circumstance. I want God to get you to the place that He wants you to be. And the only way you can do that is you got to understand the word. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs>